works every. Hi, everybody. This is Vince Gilligan, uh, co-creator of Better Call Saul, and this is episode four, entitled "Hero." And I am here with Patrick Fabian. I play Howard Hamlin. Ray Seahorn. I play Kim. Jennifer Hutchison. I wrote this episode. Nina Jack. I'm one of the producers. Colin Buxy. I directed this episode. Uh, Bill Pulaski, visual effects supervisor. Here we are in Cicero, Illinois. Now, was this uh, Colin and uh, Jenny, was this really Cicero, Illinois? It certainly was not. Um, (laughs) It was good old downtown Albuquerque. But here's some of here's some of Bill's work. See up top it says Cicero Mercantile, or right. at least part of it. How'd you do that, Bill? How's that work? Uh, that's that's just a digital map painting. So we just matched the texture of the original building and replaced everything above street level. He says it so casually, like and, uh, yeah, it's just right. a digital oh, map painting. Right. <laughs> digital map painting, you know, like you do. Now, <laughs> is, is, is that it's Cicero snap. an actual sign that you found in Chicago, or is it something you made up? That's everything's everything's created. Everything was part of a painting. Great, but do you base it on a photo? Do you base it on a? Uh, it was it was based on like artwork I think that came from the art department. So then we just matched the the uh, uh, the font and then just created a sign for it. Oh, okay, mm. wow, well, that's cool. Did you put something back there as well, or is that? I think that's all real you. background. I think that's real. <laughs> it's, it's I, think it's real. I think that's real. That's real. <laughs> Can't remember. Is Bob's shirt real? <laughs> <laughs> Is Bob real? <laughs> Colin's never seen the show. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, Kevin Weissman, who uh, I remember we worked with uh, Jenny. You and I, we had the, he was on the X-Files. He was on the first episode I ever directed. Oh, really? Uh, of television, episode of the X-Files. Wow. And he was great. We, he, we painted, we made him invisible and then painted him yellow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And he hated it. Magic, magic carpet. <laughs> he what? Magic carpet. Magic, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's right, yeah, with the with the genie in the car. Yeah. yeah, he did. He's an excellent actor. Yeah, yeah. He was great on Hello, Ladies. Oh, yeah. And he did Alias, and I did a play with him in La Mirada. So thank you, Kevin. Oh. Wow. Six Degrees of Kevin. Yes. <laughs> Such a small world. Now, I did this other... This, uh, other podcasts that where they f- were freezing everything like you said fans do they freeze frame and they froze that license and were asking me like does this mean anything like everything on the guy's license right. when he opens the wallet and I was like oh. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but you do have you know because of the ability to freeze frame in 4K yeah. everything has to be detailed yeah. correctly it can't just be so there is uh, all the props there is meaning in the art department it. on the show yeah it's just amazing the detail and here is Mel Rodriguez. He's so good. I love Mel. He's the sweetest guy. He was so nice. I think it was, I mean, our our, our, our excellent casting, uh, uh, L.A. casting, uh, L.A. casting and Albuquerque casting are all wonderful. In the, in the case of L.A. casting, <laughs> Sharon and Sherry uh, uh, were looking for folks to play this part. But also I think Diane Mercer, our, our, our post-production our head of post-production uh, producer Diane Mercer had just worked with Mel on Enlisted, and said how how much she loved him, and he's he's great. <laughs> and of course, I think if you're listening to the uh, to these, you've probably already watched every episode, so you know that you're going to see Mel in, in the final episode, and he's great in it. You right in your head, you think I want? I'll come in. It's really hard to play drunk. And it's even probably just as hard to, <laughs> sing, drunk. to sing drunk <laughs> and to play drunk when you're not even drunk. Like just... That's why I think Mel was actually drunk. <laughs> but, and to play drunk when you're not drunk and you're not actually supposed to be drunk, you're in fact playing drunk. It's, yeah, That's it's what I was trying to say. At all. Are you yeah. drunk? No. <laughs> I'm keeping the money. Here you go, fatty. I got dibs on that watch, man. I don't see that. What kind is it? I don't know. It's just a watch. Hey, gotta get out of here, man. Oh. The folks who wrote uh, deep this is a Deep Purple song, and uh, the guys who wrote it and the publishing company were very nice to us, and were very. Uh, uh, it was. It was. It was. It was definitely worth the money. And obviously, we use it again in episode ten. Mm. Now, and, this and 100 was, signed t-shirts from Vince. <laughs> hey, if that's what it takes. This was a scene that was not originally 
a part of our show. Oh, that's uh, right. Because this was uh, this was added later. The entire teaser you're watching was 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 added later because uh, the running time on this episode uh, came in came in short, and I'm so glad it did because this teaser which uh, was a bit of an afterthought uh, in the writer's room on, on all of our parts, actually helped set up episode 10, helped set up the very end of the whole season. So it couldn't have worked out better that the uh, the episode wound up short because the original plan was the scene you're going to see in a minute coming up here out in the woods with the tent. That was going to be the teaser. Yeah, it afforded us a nice opportunity to not only see more into Jimmy's past, but like Vince said, to set up episode 10 and... You know, we were a little nervous about having to fill that space, but then ultimately it ended up being great. Yeah, absolutely. I love that reveal, Colin, yeah. with, uh, with a Marco. A great reveal. And I love that last shot. I love all your yeah. shots, Colin. That last shot, that wide uh, with them, oh, tiny little yeah. silhouetted figures. You, you have a yeah, beautiful like eye, my friend. I like that, too. I love the Rush poster in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, and if you look, if you can see really closely, Pittsburgh. Oh, really? <laughs> it's a Pittsburgh show. Uh, oh, nice. Patrick and I are from Pittsburgh, so I got to give the Berg a little shout out. And there's, nice. a, and there's a Peter Frampton poster up, and there's, I uh, forget what other ones there are. There's uh, good, good taste in music, these guys. And they're very much living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> the wood panel basements, <laughs> right? This, this is a wonderful set. Uh, this is a set on stage, uh, and it's just a great, great job by, uh, it's another one of our... Uh, one of our uh, so this is this is the cell phone one, yeah. <laughs> but great, great set. I love that set. Beautifully built and uh, this this one was a combination of of Breaking Bad shot and a new shot. I believe oh, was it? I, I think it was all shot. Well, I, it we, was based on a Breaking Bad right, shot, of but the, it was all shot was. a new. Inspired by. Yeah. Never tell anyone, would we? So what? Uh, you you guys? Uh, am I correct, uh, Colin? And thinking you're down by the Rio Grande? Uh, that, you're down by the river. That is correct. What no is, trailer, though. And by the no. way, is it Rio Grande or Rio Grande? I hear it both ways. Nina? Wow. Should be Grande. I, I always say Rio... Uh, anyway, what do I always say? Because that's the size iced tea I like is Grande, <laughs> right? Yeah. Dazzling behind-the-scenes commentary. <laughs> 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 I like the down by the river, though. Here's another question. <laughs> the band down by the river. I was like, there's a Which trailer Bob there. Bob wrote, wrote that skit, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, that's right. Bob Odenkirk yeah. wrote the living the in a van down by the motivational river. Motivational speaker. Yeah. <laughs> These two. The Kettlemans. A team so Kettleman. These guys are so goddamn good. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy, in order here, uh, Jeremy Seamus and Julianne Emery uh, from left to right there. They are, uh, but not in order of, they are uh, They are so equally wonderful, each of them. They are, and they had never met each other before the pilot episode. And they showed up having spent time together uh, to make sure that they seem like an old married couple. They are. They gave 150%. Mm -hmm. I mean, how was it working with the, them, Colin? Yeah, but they, you know, they, they, like you say, they seemed like a couple. Um, so that, uh, you know, that makes that makes things easier as a as a director. That there was some chemistry uh, between them. Absolutely. And she, you know, they really believed they were oh, doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. And so yeah. you just fall oh, yeah. right into it. <laughs> it just, yeah. It was, People ask me a lot if they were um, improving, and I said, no, that's, that's how good the writing and the acting and the directing is, is that it looks like improv and ad-lib over each other. I, I think uh, Julianne said that they actually, when they would get together in order to build that rapport but not make the script feel practiced when mm -hmm. they did it on set, they would improv together as Mr. and Mrs. Kettleman. Mm. They would have conversations. Yes, yeah. Yeah. They outside. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Outside, so that when they were doing the script, it had that natural, yeah. really natural feel and talking over each other. And, 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 and a little bit of their improv, not in this scene, but a little oh, bit yeah. every now and then yeah. in an episode does sneak does, in. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, this is all wonderful dialogue from uh, the lovely uh, Miss Hutchison here. We are not I love, giving I love this the back. way. I love, I love that. I love that. Are we are giving. not giving. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> what time What time was this? Was this the middle of the night or was like, it? Yeah, this was, this, this was. It, it was like a midnight-ish kind of yeah, thing. We yeah. actually, this ended up not being too. It was, it was quite windy. And I think there are also, if I recall, quite a few crickets that have had to be dealt with Sound at right. the end too. Thrill about that. You know yes. what? Larry and Kevin are, are, are genius mixers. They, uh, they, 
they did a they worked hard and and Phil and his crew on our on set recorders Phil they did a great job minimizing that because you're right they're they're like like a buzzsaw uh-huh. that time of year they're <laughs> the locusts or whatever they're like crazy loud they tried to chloroform all the crickets first didn't they that didn't work <laughs> <laughs> no they, no no crickets were harmed in the filming of this episode of Salt. please don't write me or hashtag me I can't promise none of them were harmed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this money that we use, you know, because we have period money since we have to deal with, you know, being back in, in 2002. Oh, my God, that's right. Wow. And, and so it's not, oh, um, it, you know, there is a lot of fake money. In there. I mean, there is anyway, clearly. Because <laughs> right, like, that right. is a lot of money there. But you have to be very careful which bills you're going to actually see because we can really read what they are. And so you, you have to make sure, and, and not only that, that it's a 2002 bill, which is hard to find, we found yeah. out <laughs> the hard is way. issues with... Printing like in the the um, the other episode where it's the f- fake money. Um, why did I just forget Ricky Big Ricky's? Yeah. Or the or this, are there issues with printing fake money that you get in trouble with legally? Oh, uh, you got to be careful. I think you there do. are guidelines, especially are. in movie and TV, because it's something that's so common. Aren't the notes that you see the real the real thing? The, the ones that are on the outside. Of the, we do our best, right, to bundles. put the real ones yes. on the outside. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We we uh, yeah the real ones are co- real one on the outside and the rest of them yeah. are fake yeah. uh, for the close ups anyway because hmm. man with that 4K and I know you guys were talking about this on another commentary the 4K it's amazing technology this ultra HD we got now but man it is it is rough on you gotta you, you gotta have all your eyes dotted and your T's crossed with the props and and all that because you can read everything now. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, this is that awful moment broke where my she heart. says, it breaks you're the my kind heart. of lawyer that guilty people hire. <laughs> His face is just like, Bob played it so beautifully. Oh, yeah. he, he plays it wonderfully here. I I love, one of the things I'm so proud of, and, and I say that from a distance even, not even like, I just, I feel like I don't even know how it happened. Like, I'm not even taking any credit or anything. I, I love how light on its feet this show is in the sense that we kind of jeté from... Comedy. Je t- that's that's French. He's a professional <laughs> writer. I'm a professional dancer, actually. It's not a ballet, it's a ballet term. Really? Yeah. You're using their fence. But, but we, I love how we can go so nimbly, and it's because of you actors and and the wonderful directing, and and that just. It, but it's, I think it starts with the actors. We nimbly go from funny to dramatic to sad to, I mean... It, we it is. Just, it's very fluid. It's fluid. It's fluid. Yeah. Which is so but it's, realistic it, when you think it's, about it. It makes it real. It makes it life, you know. It's a, yeah. that's, but we did have a hard time really sort of finding, figuring out what the show was that because of that. But it, but it's, it all came together yeah. beautifully. <laughs> kind of breaks my heart a little. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> my dad George Gilligan I gotta give him a shout out because I love that I did he that, he said that line right there we can't all be as blessed as you he said he, said he, played, it, he, said he played it over and over and over again he loved it so much he oh, laughed so that. that was a great line of Jenny's and it just made him laugh over and over and over and over again thank you Mr. Gilligan <laughs> aww Here's a zoom. I love how you use the zoom lens here. This is, we did talk, uh, Colin, uh, yeah. about uh, mixing things up from Breaking Bad. You want to talk about how different it is to do well, Breaking Well, I mean, Bad? there were a couple of pointers from you, one of which was something you referred to as a Kubrick zoom. Right. Uh, and the other was the use of extremely wide angle lenses. Gotcha. And I think, I don't know whether you mentioned this to me, but I was determined to keep away from that thing that became a signature Breaking Bad shot, which was, you know, the shot where you put the camera where it's got no right to yes, be. Yes, yes, yes. Inside things looking out. I tried to stay away from that. Which I think was wise. I yeah. mean, and not to say we haven't done it a few times right. uh, uh, nicely on other episodes, but I, I think that was wise of you because those are fun, but that was such a signature Breaking Bad thing, and yeah. we're always looking for ways to, to differentiate this show visually from that show. And what would be the Kubrick zoom? The that- Kubrickian zoom or a nice, long, slow, stately, like uh, he used a great effect in Barry Lyndon, for instance. There's amazing amazingly long zooms where you start on uh, Ryan O'Neill in a, in, a, in a rowboat and you slowly zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out until he's 
un, an unbelievably tiny figure. Hmm. Barry Lyndon, if you haven't seen it, by all means, okay. rent it. Great. I'm talking to the audience, but you too. I'm talking to you too. <laughs> I'm, uh, should I go now? <laughs> go now. <laughs> leave Ray, now. Let's go. I think, I think he's no. dismissing us. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking about dismissing. How about Michael Mando? Michael it's Mando. Just bad asses can be just standing there and holding his own. He's got that crazy energy in his eyes that, yeah. that you know, and I know him. And he's a very nice guy and a very gentle guy. But when he locks those eyes, it's that it's that real uncomfortable awfulness that comes seeping through. <laughs> he really it's has true. a lot of presence. Yeah, he's he uh, got charisma. Got great charisma. Had had you had you guys, uh, uh, Patrick and Ray, had you guys met Michael before? No. Before this show? Before doing the show, no. But we did meet him, you know, days before he started shooting. And as this, whole, you were talking about the Cuttlemans earlier. It, this whole cast was amazing. We're all down there in Albuquerque, and, and Bob I have to give special credit to because the sheer number of lines and hours that he was working um, was always generous with his time, and our whole cast did a lot to rehearse and run your lines over and over and over and over, over offset any time you could, and Bob would be the first person to be calling you if you had a scene tomorrow to say, how early do you want me to show up to rehearse with you? What, what's going on? Nice. Yeah. That's great. Did you a favor? I love that story about how you and he went up to Santa Fe one weekend just to just to <laughs> get used to each other's presence. Before we shot our first presence. garage scene, yeah. But he didn't he didn't want to talk because he was resting his voice. His throat. He had had a little bit of a sore throat. Yeah, and uh, I was on set watching every day. But Bob knew that our first scene outside of the boardroom, that first beautiful garage scene, we were supposed to play this. You know, around ten year plus or minus, and um, you know, history of this deep intimacy and relationship of all sorts and he couldn't talk and he was also very tired but he offered that we go to Santa Fe <laughs> but with the caveat that he didn't want to talk <laughs> at all <laughs> and I was just meeting I mean I met him at the screen test but you know I'm, I'm a huge fan and every bit of my nervousness is like huh uh, well yes I'll say yes but then you get in the car and you realize all of your armor is gone. Anything you might want to do in those nervous moments to get to know somebody, be clever, be funny, yeah. say something. Because I'm not going to talk if he's not talking. And wow. We spent the day in silence, and it turned out to be one of the most beautiful gifts for the scene we had to shoot. That is awesome. I love when it. When I was watching this in this moment, I had read the script, obviously. I knew it was happening. And yet, when I see the money revealed, and I realize yeah. that he really has taken the money, yeah. I was so disappointed. And a bit, and a oh, bit really? like Howard. Yeah. I was so paternally disappointed. I was like, huh. oh, no, Jimmy. <laughs> I love the way Colin reveals it here, pulling it out from behind that glass right. that in the foreground. I, I agree. And it's and here he is. Here Jimmy is uh, rationalizing. And I got to give a shout out to the music. The music, the music is so good yeah. in this scene. I, I I'm sorry I'm drawing a blank on the artist here, but it's it's this jazz flute version of of uh, of uh, Glory Hallelujah, right? At the yes. Battle Hymn of the Republic, right? Is that what it is? Yes. And it is so Perfect, and I think Yvette, uh, who uh, who works for uh, works with uh, uh, Thomas G, our music supervisor, found this, and hats off to her. As soon One. as we heard it, we knew we were yeah. like, "That's it." <laughs> and Jennifer, it's such a great scene that like he he's doing the wrong thing, but he's desperately still got a finger on trying to make it the right thing, that it's yeah. still, that it's ethical. That's, uh, and one of those things that sort of um, differentiates Jimmy from Saul is he's still in a place where he has to justify that stuff to himself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can't just take a bribe. I earned this money for services rendered. And I think that's what's yeah. been really surprising and interesting about him as a character is I love watching he has, still has to get there because Saul would have just taken it. I love it. <laughs> Paul Jeffrey, the tailor here. This was excellent casting. So uh, now, Colin, I, I, I'm guessing from your accent, you're from New Jersey. But, that's, but, correct. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's but that's correct. But, 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 <laughs> but I understand you also have an affinity for uh, the UK. Uh, is this is this a proper English? Was how important was it to you to have a proper English uh, tailor? Oh, yeah. I guess there was a, a little of that sort of the snobbery of uh, of that character. Uh, was was best portrayed with an English accent, and you know, old fashioned old fashioned tailoring seemed seemed right to have a, a an Englishman. You were just trying that. to recreate the Pretty Woman scene here, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 is that what you were going for? <laughs> well, there's a hint. That's a that, that's a hint of things to come. No, yes, yeah. yeah, and the right. suits yeah. aren't yeah. the suits yeah. on the top when they pan back. Isn't that those are Saul suits, aren't they? Uh, the those two, or I no? was only really aware of Saul shirts and ties. Okay. This tailor, this actor did a nice job because he played it very, very subtle. Yes. Uh, he did a yes. wonderful job. So, uh, 
Yeah, he's only, he tries to hide how insulted he feels. Yes, <laughs> yes. He hides he it very well. well. He hides it, but she, well. a little bit comes good. through. Yeah. It was good. So, and Eileen Fogarty here, I love oh, her. Oh, she's so good. And it was really fun to do a scene with her where she wasn't just yelling at Jimmy, yes. you know, where they're having an actual conversation. And, yeah. and this book, because again, you can see every detail. We, every one of those names we came up with, and Mark Hansen and his team and props built this book for us. And we had this email chain of uh, hair color names. Really? I was sitting on set and they're like, we need like 40 hair color names. I was sitting on set, we were filming a Chuck scene and I just started banging out names. <laughs> and I was like, maybe this is what I can do if this TV thing doesn't work out. Which um, is the one you're most proud of? Sassafras Glow? Sassafras Glow Sassafras Glow is, I mean, that was the one I think I pitched in the room. Yeah, yeah, and it was. It I held was. on to that. And then Strawberry Fields Forever is just a shout out to my dad who is a huge Beatles fan. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, Sassafras Glow, for sure. These ladies are great. I think the ladies in the background, I think, I want to say they actually work in the nail salon. In they do. Many yeah. Of Several, do, yeah. The, many of the ones God that we have them. in those scenes, they do. They, they, they were so much fun to work with. Very sweet ladies. And here's the lovely Ray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, this is a great scene. I, I love the way you play this, Ray. Thanks. I love how Colin, I can, I can Colin read it. helped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly making personal calls on company time. <laughs> <laughs> I love, Jennifer, that you wrote this scene, too, that, that shows a vulnerable side to her. And she's like, she's like a 14-year-old whose best friend that she usually talks to every day didn't call her this week because <laughs> she cannot deal with it. I love it. On the day of the shoot, yeah. though, I was Jimmy's voice. I was standing outside the door, yes. and they'd say action, and I would do Which my... Which was a little my, unnerving. My, my, worst, my worst English accent, and then, she'd, and then she'd actually compose herself and do her scene. Nice. That's true. I had forgotten that. I got to say, I got to I gotta give a, uh, I love how you got Kurt Russell, the Kurt Russell reference in here, Jenny, because I got, I had the pleasure, the great pleasure and honor of meeting Kurt Russell uh, in the not too distant past, a couple months back, and I told him we were going to have a shout out to him, and he, and he said right on, because he, he was a Breaking Bad fan, oh, which I fun. cannot tell you how over the moon I was to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I give a shout out to Colin right here because, uh, you know, this is, there's not a whole lot for me to do here really except to come and sort of be, but, you know, I want to be this good schoolboy. So I was coming in and showing Colin exactly how much I could sit there and be. And he would just come in and gently remind me that it was okay to sort of be elsewhere in my brain and be not, not there, just sort of be not present because I'm not, I'm thinking of other things. Yeah. And it's a great, it's I a love great clue. And, I, you know, uh, it's a good, nice to have a director to remind you to help help you get to where you need to go. And I love the way you play that. You do this thing where you go, you kind of sniff and you look <laughs> off to the side. And I know that sounds silly, but the way you do it, I love it every time I see it. I'm serious. I love it because you're just really so not listening. That, that might be my father. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Maybe I got to see doing that. <laughs> and I love you've got the, the car that uh, Robert McCall from The Equalizer yeah. drove <laughs> back in the 80s. I, lo- I love your suit. The suits are did amazing. Suit help Jennifer Bryan. Suits yes. are amazing. Yeah. 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 The suit oh, definitely the helps. Yeah. I always feel like I'm the most expensively dressed person in any yeah. scene. And, yeah. And it's I think you are. Yeah. Yeah. This reveal is hands down. It is so good. It is. And that's a real billboard. And, and yep. we're gonna we're gonna get to talking with Bill here uh, uh, quite a bit about this sequence coming up. But uh, you did not have to animate this billboard here. This is a real billboard. Clear Channel helped us with. It's it was really up yeah. there. And people tweeted it. Yeah. Yes. But we thank God did not yes. tweet everything that went down right. during this episode. I was very surprised. I mean, we knew we couldn't hide the billboard because it's in the middle of downtown Albuquerque right off the freeway. But I was surprised how little actually, it was just the billboard. Yeah. I was for well, well, I think because the be show other. hadn't, you know, certainly hadn't aired yet. Mm, so nobody right. knew what yeah. was good. They're like, well, it's him, but he doesn't look like him. And what, you know, it, it, it was actually a great sort of uh, publicity uh, yeah. bit to yeah, go out there sure. because it was just enough. Yeah. They well, probably also, it it's such a real part of Albuquerque. These kind of right. billboards oh, yeah. for lawyers yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, all over it wasn't the place. that strange to yeah. people passing by. Right. And Colin, I remember your direction in that scene to me. <laughs> was like, <laughs> oh, my line. Yeah. Do I want to hear this? Kim, well, no, no, great. Kim <laughs> reveal, and I thought it was great, Kim reveals a not-so-lovely side of her that to, in order to get ahead, she's willing to pretend she's not even friends with Jimmy because it's not that savory. Um, but So my line was written with ellipses and stuff and says, I believe parenthetically, that um, she's struggling to figure out what to say. So Colin comes over to me, and I'm like, and he, I think you were just nominated for an Emmy. I'm like, oh my God, Colin's coming over here. 
<laughs> and he was like, tell me what you'll... I can't do your accent at all. Tell me what you're thinking in this scene. And I was like, well, I think she I wants to impress her boss, but she's um, unsure, and it's, she's hesitating and not sure how to lie. And I go through the whole thing thinking I'm being brilliant or whatever. And she said, yes, I can see all of that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I needed it. I needed to be told that it was on the page and to just talk. You are so cute. Here. Yes. I gotta tell you, Aww, you the two yeah. of you, he, him too. You guys are so cute together. I love when you smack him when you yeah. with your hand. <laughs> yeah, that you was smack not his hand scripted. Away. That was all I you love, guys. I love how you two play this scene. Yeah, this is my favorite scene in the episode. I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all amazing, but this one especially just. It is a joy to me playing the yeah. scenes where both of them have their masks off, and Bob exactly. and I have a lot of fun finding that that chemistry. The stuff that's between lines, not and not so much in them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Has he been in that uh, university uh, sweatshirt before? No, I think this is the, the first university time. Of, uh, yeah. Samoa. American, American Samoa. American Samoa. So good. Yeah. Go land cribs. <laughs> <laughs> I think they will be for sale for anyone listening who may want to <laughs> give up some of your money. I have one. Money. I love my. They're very cozy. <laughs> These We made them into crew gifts uh, yeah. with hoodie, a hoodie version into crew gifts at the end of the year. didn't actually explode, but, you know, pretty damn pissed. Like we this did this scene a hundred times a hundred different ways, and it was... So great to uh, Jimmy. and we used to take, one, exactly. take one for everything. Huh? <laughs> we used to take one for everything. They always do, by the way, no matter what. <laughs> no, there was a much angrier version of this and a more hostile one. And um, but all of these different layers are in the scenes, and I love it that the that the scenes have different windy paths. Comedy to drama, like you said, and also yeah. stakes getting lowered and raised and lowered and raised and. There's also just so much gray. There is no There's black and white. And yeah. when scenes end, it's it's like you know there, it 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 doesn't have these ties. Yeah. You know, it, it's, I agree. It's like, yeah. I love that. I love how good, great you two are that we can hang. I don't love. I don't want to cut unless we have to. And that's my editing philosophy. And I love that you gave us this gift of letting us hang. All three of you, you you and Bob and Colin, gave us this gift of being able to hang in this shot. I think we're in the shot for nearly a minute. And I love, by the way, Tony and his uh, art uh, uh, production designer. <laughs> this crazy <laughs> ass. You've got a Venetian gondolier, and you've got the Parthenon, and and There's over on the so other side, you've happening. got a dolphin yep. jumping, and probably the goddamn Eiffel Tower. It is crazy. It's probably <laughs> still up. Oh yeah, on the <laughs> I, yeah. I don't, yeah. We should find out. I love it. It's almost. It. it almost feels like a foreshadowing of what Jimmy will become. Yeah. Yeah. Saul with his constitution wall. I love it. Yeah. Where you could be somewhere where they appreciate you. You know, where they see how valuable you are. You know, I'm not going to tell you I love you, but right. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you play this right, and of course, oh, and Bob is right. You. Did do you? Do you like working up to it? Do you like, or is it like, oh man, I'm going to be good here at the beginning, and then I'm going to have a hard time keeping that? I mean, how do you, how do you like? I mean, do you want to, do you want to have more and more takes, or do you want to? Uh, different I, actors. I different. will do takes until they escort me off a set. Um, <laughs> but um, that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that you don't realize that sometimes um, the middle or the beginning had a had a fresher energy. But um, because. All of the actors Next in this up, cast are are, are so wonderful that all of us um, are doing just slightly different takes, even minusculely, on the line. And so you're able to use simply the practice of listening right, in right. character as a way that it feels fresh every time. Right. And so it's just, it's very interesting to me to keep finding like where it's going and where it's going. The thing that's hard for me sometimes is to not have a full take of a whole scene that feels like I hit every line and every beat the way I wanted to, for me to take in the concept that it can be edited and that we got part of it in another one is sometimes difficult to walk away from. And at the end of that scene, I just have to say real quick, it was, it was I, Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, but Bob wanted, to, when he turned it up, he wanted to make sure that we could see that we turned it up and so he was uh, moving himself. Right, right, right. He was right. Yeah, because we couldn't have the massage chairs yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So he was shaking was himself yeah. there. He did great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's great. And here we have the amazing Don Lewis, yeah. who right. I am a huge fan of. It's a different uh, world. She did a voice in Futurama, and I'm a big Futurama nerd, so I completely uh -huh. geeked out on her when she showed uh -huh. up at set. <laughs> and she wrote the theme music for yes. 
the spinoff from the Cobb Bruce oh, Husby show. Oh, different world. Yes. Different world, yes. Different yeah. world. She did. Yeah. Yes. Wow. She wrote the theme music, and she got cast. Yeah, yes. she was in it. I didn't she know she wrote that. Yeah. yeah. But and she happened to be in the room when she was going back for her callback to get cast, and, and Bill Cosby and somebody else was there, and they were... They, they said, excuse us, we have, we have to have a conversation. And they started talking about the music, and she said, well, I wrote that. Wow. <laughs> That's wrote, funny. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Mr. McGill is hoping to further she's uh, excellent here. Now she's refereeing frickin' frack. Yeah. Uh, somebody, you two are I Patrick, was, your contained anger in this, yeah. like, to be <laughs> dignified about this is hysterical. Well, I, it's I, so I think good. it wasn't until, like, on the day that I saw that he was in my suit that I was just like, hey, he really is in my suit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be a moron here. I read the script. I know what's supposed to be happening. And yet, I was like, hey, he really is wearing my suit <laughs> and somehow he's not wearing it as nicely in my opinion you know? <laughs> it's just on that line and Colin I'm sure you're part of it too of like petty brat and like and really like he has a point <laughs> there's also I don't know if we've gone past the point where they where he refers to is it Hamlindigo blue yes yes oh, yes, yes. Uh, blue. Is it sort of copyrighted yes, yes. color yes. I got it we got to give a shout yeah. out to Jen Carroll my lovely assistant uh, who uh, early in the season uh, coined the term Hamlindigo blue Hamlindigo blue and That's we so good. we had to get it in here Briefly, it was trending on Twitter when this was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, now everybody assumes I have to be in that every day. <laughs> My tombstone may be Hamlet. <laughs> Perfect. And this is more great editing from Kelly Dixon and uh, and her assistant yeah. Chris McCaleb. I think was helping out on this and. Uh, if not this scene, this episode certainly. Uh, this oh, is, this is that great sequence. Yeah, yeah the yeah, great yeah. montage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob was, always does a, like a three a three sixty tiny like crank wine with one hand when he's being his yeah. like his assistant, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he does. assistant yeah. he or does. his like business voice. He does. You're right. He always does. Always counterclockwise. <laughs> This I was the challenge to together. shoot, right? This music is uh, very good music. Yeah. 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 Great use of music. Great use of music. And again, I feel like an idiot. I'm drawing a blank, but it's a great old jazz. It's Dave Brubeck. It's Dave is Brubeck? It? Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Dave Brubeck. And it's wonderful. And Colin, did you shoot these back to back or we shot this whole we 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 shot this whole sequence, you know, as a and the and the whole idea was it was one wide shot and he jumped from side to side in, oh. in, in the frame, and then it, it got you know ed edited in a in a way. But that that's that's basically the idea: is he comes further and further down that corridor and crosses off more and more names mm. and runs out of names. Too. And here, this is a simple avid flip. All this is right here is is uh, Kelly has flipped. Uh, I think. Oh. Is, yeah. yeah. And it took me like twenty viewings yeah. to even realize she had done it. <laughs> but it's like suddenly the cops disappear. So. But it doesn't really matter. It's the all artistic license. His face is great. <laughs> Excuse me. This is where he gets the idea, I guess, to uh, to call UNM. All the other media outlets mm -hmm. have failed him. <laughs> That's that Embassy Suites is the first place I ever stayed when I first <laughs> when, I, when I first was uh, wonderful there, architecturally, isn't it? When I first when I first was uh, scouting Albuquerque for Breaking Bad, even before the pilot. Mm. Uh, I love this shot though. Just and again, there's so much great visual work, but just to say yes. There is an actual billboard yes. on yes. Yep. Here is downtown Albuquerque. And in the yeah. creation of the design of that billboard, Patrick, I don't know if you remember, we had done that photo shoot because we did mock-ups actually with Patrick oh, right. in the suit. In the same poses and yeah, everything else. Yeah, in the same pose the hair and hair and before. And we, you know, there were all different variations that we did before de determining on that. And speaking of Kubrick, right, you swear this guy looks like a young Kubrick. This, guy's, this young man's name is Josh Fadum, and we call him Kid Kubrick. Because he looks, <laughs> he looks so much, if you Google pictures of, of a young Stanley Kubrick, he looks so much like him. He is so funny. He does, he does such a good job. And then uh, Julian bon, Bonfilio, bon, if I'm pronouncing your name right, I hope uh, the gentleman here, the, these two guys do a great job. Yeah. They're very funny. Funny. On probably the hottest day I've ever yeah, it's, seen. Yeah. It's, it's about 116 degrees yeah. out yes. there on the on the tarmac. Yes. But, so, Bill Pulaski, you've been you've been uh, we're going to need to uh, quiet you down a little bit here. <laughs> been talking to it. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Uh, no, you're a gentleman. Tell us this se sequence must have been an enormous nightmare for you. Talk well, talk about what you had to do. <laughs> I don't mean that. Was, I mean just because of all the things you had to erase. Talk about what you had to erase here. Well, um, the, the premise on it was to try to shoot as much of it practically as possible. So this is the real, 
billboard. And what was the height on the billboard? 70, 72 70, feet, 70, I think. 72 feet or something like that. So uh, the um, what we went with was to try to do as much of it practically as possible. But anytime you see anybody up on the billboard, there's actually a wire on everybody that's up there. Uh, and uh, so it, it's, it, it's, it's easy to say we just did wire removal on it. But um, what made it complex was the camera movements and the the clothing that's the, the wardrobe and everything else that has a texture to it. So even though it, a wire removal normally wouldn't be sexy, this is actually very very complex wire work. Colin, why'd you have to make it so tough for for Bill? For Bill, <laughs> just a, it's just a principle, isn't it? <laughs> I, think, I, I think when we walked into it, we didn't want to have visual effects dictate how how you guys shot it. So we tried to do as much of it in post-production as we could, but to give you the flexibility to do whatever you wanted to do on set. Well, you, and you are making a sound even, I mean, it's not just wire removal. You had a giant crane yeah. overhead. You had to race the crane too. Oh, really? Yeah, in every oh, yeah. shot that we look up, there's a, there's a crane and there's wires and all the actors. Um, most of the visual effect shots are for shots where we're on the billboard looking down. But um, every shot in this sequence has visual effect shots in it. If, up for the fall. <laughs> there we go. And, and uh, our locations department actually had to work with the city to put signs up on freeway because that is actually Interstate 25 running up and down to make sure they knew a special event was happening. Oh, so that I if they saw this that. happen, they weren't going to freak out and cause, out, cause right. accidents. There weren't any 911 calls? There were, I believe there were a couple. Mm. Ah. And this is actually nice to know that some yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But, yeah, it's those kind of details you have to think of Thank uh, you, ahead of time. Martin. Now, how so, high did Bob actually climb? Well, he's he's on a wire there, isn't he? Yes. He's on a wire there because he could only really go a few steps for the kind of safety rules. So he's 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 on a wire here. Oh, well, actually, I don't know. That's maybe that's not even... When Bob he was on one. the red portion, he wasn't. He, he was, um, and then this is as far as he would he, right. he went. And, and by now. the way, he would have done more, but there, there's rules and stuff. So, and, and, that's and, a spe- and that's a visual that's effect. That's a visual effect shot, right? right? Any the shot ground. where you're looking down is a visual yeah. effect shot. Meaning, you, meaning it was nothing but like green tarps and stuff, and you and you put in all that. that yeah, you were he was down. only about maybe five feet off the ground, right. and we wow. made it look like he's 70 feet off the ground. Wow. Fantastic. And there's a crane up there seen through all that mesh, and you had to erase all that. Right, and oh, crane supporting both of the uh, both of the actors. Because we couldn't actually safety anyone that was on the billboard from the billboard board itself you know right. safety being number one priority on all of this so they were safety from a separate crane and the shots that bill's talking about everything he had to recreate looking down those were shot on our sound stage yeah. with an entirely separate billboard that yeah, was we're, built. and we're cutting between the two things here mm-hmm. real uh yeah real with a stump stump man yeah, there's an enormous amount of stunt work in this. Yeah. In this yeah. Sequence. Eddie Fernandez, there's a guy hanging. He did a great job. So these, those you closer said he shots. was in the montage scene of 102, If right? you look real close, he's there on purpose as as one of uh, Jimmy's clients. you got to mm. look real close. It's the scene you're in in 102. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, where I worked on a smile for 45 minutes for Michelle McLaren, just hoping she'd see it. <laughs> 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 I love Michelle. So those close ones were at the uh, the billboard that was on our back lot that was only about 12 feet off the ground. Yeah. Um, mm. So in order to create the illusion, that was the work you know between Colin's design and, and storyboarding and shot making and Bill's uh, team uh, putting together plate shots and 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 meshing what we would shoot as plates on location from high up on the crane to what was actually there What's on, a plate uh, shot? the green screen below. This is a plate a, shot, right? This is actually a map painting. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, map painting. So oh. that was uh, when we photographed the scene, it would, uh, all of our camera trucks were there, so we re- replaced everything in the background there, and that's it's, that's 90, 90% of that shot is digital. And look at this. I mean, you think uh, the, the TV there, that's 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 a digital effect. Right, that was all green screen. When we, yeah. we just taped that over when we were shooting it, right? Um, what I like in this is uh, my suspenders, frankly. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's as casual I get at work. I take my jacket off and I look like Michael Douglas from Wall Street. Thank you, Jennifer <laughs> You, you do. You <laughs> Except more handsome. Where's your I did not phone? know the look you oh, give me I when look. I say everybody loves a hero. Well, how about this? Look, look at that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, what's going on here? I did not know you were doing that. Yeah, well, I'm not a dummy. I don't run the company because I'm a, an idiot. You, <laughs> you run it because you have suspenders. Uh, yes, sure. But so, this is what I like. Oh, this what's was Kim really think? Moment. Whose side is she really on? 
Huh. Uh, she likes it. Uh, <laughs> she likes that rascal. <laughs> it was, that was such a sweet moment. I that was, was sweet. That is thrilled sweet to play. It. I think Colin, Colin had to made give me, the me do forty-eight yes, different smiles. <laughs> I was going to say he did. It's very unlike me. Oh my she god! She usually takes I one or two. You. <laughs> and she kept looking at me, going like, "Am I am, am I going crazy? What, what am I doing? Am I doing it wrong? Am I smiling wrong? Because you're so, so adorable there. It's like I'm sure Colin wanted to see it over and over again. No, oh, I was just hazing. <laughs> okay, it was it. it was just hazing. Yeah, I love this old Western electric phone. Mm. This yeah, is we a had great meetings about yes. this phone. Did you? Yeah, we, oh yeah. yeah, we have meetings about everything. Yeah, we do. <laughs> mostly about what to have for lunch. <laughs> I love that old phone. It worked. Yay! Yay! He won for once. <laughs> Yay! He's a winner. Who wrote this article? Heather Marion, <laughs> the lovely Heather Marion. Our Look writers. at that little bit of flutter on that newspaper there. Beautiful. That's nice. It, That's that good was, directing. It was That's a guy directing. in a green leotard who was sort of working it, and then he was originally <laughs> erased by Bill Clark. Because Bill yeah. didn't have enough work in this episode. So. <laughs> well, whatever we can do to help. <laughs> but yeah, you can read this whole article if you freeze frame on it. And uh, Heather wrote it. And, and it's really not ultimately a good thing that 4K so sees. Much. And you guys talked about it in a different different audio commentaries. There's no no need to rehash it here, but it just it it it's it's a double edged sword. Just just so lovely for your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the best <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> I I miss film. I know Peter's talking about it on I, I will add to the conversation from the other one. I miss film. Uh, the digital's great, the red is great, but I, I'm a sucker for film and I miss it. And we shot Breaking Bad on film, we shoot this on H D and I'm I, I'm a little sad about that. Going to go back to it for season two? I don't think so because, I mean, there's a lot of good things about digital. I don't want to sound like a Luddite. There's a, and, and listen, from the, word. from the actor's point of view, on the film, when we shot film, you'd have to be stopping every, uh, every 11 minutes at the most. You know, this way you, could, you guys could yeah. keep rolling. And Arthur so Albert reminded yeah. me of that yeah. when, when, you know. We were complaining about our faces, just say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was like, they're going to subcontract out my pores. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, he said, like, you know, you couldn't keep doing these takes over and over and, and finding the rhythm of a scene nonstop, nonstop, if you were doing film. Man, that's true. Here's Michael McKeon, who I love. It's a dream mm -hmm. to get to work with him right? on the show. Yes. Yes, I'm very stoked. Absolutely, he's wonderful. God, all the great, great. Uh, all the great Christopher Guest movies. Yeah, oh yeah. My God, we were talking about Spinal Tap on another one, and then uh, where was that? I love about him that? in Best in Show. Best in Show, Best fantastic. In shows. He's so great in that. He's so lovely in that. He is he's such a nice guy. Well, him and Mike, I mean, him and Bob, sorry, uh, sit on set, and one of the reasons that they're really good as an actor, I observed this. They're really intelligent guys, and they might be. This may not be a direct correlation. They are voracious readers. Yes, they are. And they are. read a variety of stuff, and they are constantly trading. They're like a lend-lease lend library with yes. one another. <laughs> yep. Whatever the guy finishes, they hand it to the other, and they just go ahead and chew it up. And I think so, that has a lot so to do with why they have a great world. Nice. And I believe this was the day that um, the great, great, and terribly missed David Carr Yes. Was on set. He was. Yes. And he was wow. talking, and it was yes. David and, wow. and Bob and Michael McKean sitting over there. Yeah. And he's a voracious reader, was, excuse me. I'm so sorry he's gone, but the yeah. three of them sitting around talking about it was just like if you could even eavesdrop, you were lucky. And Bob and Michael were nice enough to invite me over to sit around talking to them. And um, uh, man, oh man, was that a pinch yourself moment. Um, three highly intelligent men. That's a shame. They passed away. Yeah. Toy too young. But uh, prop wise, prop, shout out to the prop department. The yes. the the uh, Wall Street Journal, the uh, the uh, New York Times, all of those are from that specific day in two thousand two. That's crazy. Yeah, that's how that's attention to detail that those that the prop yeah, they department. They put an enormous amount of research and and, and work ahead of time. And Mark Hansen and Trina and all of the good. It's folks. tricky to do a show in a time period that is still somewhat recent. In a yes. weird way. That's trickier like, than like way period. But I don't know. I mean, they're both extremely difficult, but you can get caught a lot, uh, a lot easier in, in 2002. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, yeah, it's recent enough where you assume certain things were or were not, and you really have to go back and look. We it, we do that in the room a lot, where mm -hmm. we have to Google hmm. did this exist in 2002. Yeah. Uh, Colin, the, I the love the way you shot this. My fancy jaguar system. is is remarkably. Primitive compared <laughs> compared to what luxury cars are now. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Sure. Not bad. 
I love this music cue from Dave Porter. Uh, this is uh, lovely music. I love the way all of this was shot, too. Yeah. And this, uh, the, I don't know if this has been mentioned in a, in a previous commentary or not, but the space blanket, you know, props put together yeah. a space blanket that is lined with uh, contact paper so that it would be not so noisy. Not uh, noisy, of course, but in dialogue scenes, it would be quite a nightmare. I wondered mm. how sound felt about that. <laughs> I love the way the light kicks off this yes. thing. Mm. I love it. This is a beautiful shot, Colin. Yeah. Great shot. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of... Uh, the shot where he comes out is is kind of interesting to oh. talk about. This is this is fabulous uh, editing because that that shot was a camera that was fixed to his belt, and oh. at the time we thought this is really not going to work because it bounced up and down. Mm -hmm. And Chris uh, and Kelly did a fantastic job on kind of jump cutting it in they and did. They making did it indeed. work. They did indeed. Yeah, I love that you're really in his head through this sequence, and it's just so harrowing. And then the point of view switches <laughs> at the so end, <laughs> and it's just a dude in a space blanket running across the street. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so great. Right, right yeah. about here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I love this lady's face. Yeah. Is that right. the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, great editing. Great, great, as always, Colin. Wonderful directing job. Now, did you ever shoot inside the real house that we're seeing the exterior, or was it always just the exterior and the set? The it was interior? always, the, yeah, the yeah. exterior and the set. Yeah, we, they're nothing alike inside. We <laughs> might have technically been inside looking out the door, just the in door. the doorway, but that would be it. Same, same, honestly, with the Walter White house. Yeah. We were never inside oh, except really? except looking through a fake Oh no! I'm sorry. Looking through the window, we're looking at looking out a window, looking out a door. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Chuck. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Back into the cocoon. Yes. <sighs> Chuck, our sad wow. little ET. Oh, great job, <laughs> Bill. Just fantastic. The uh, Bill's great work is oh. most of it. You never even notice because that's how good it is, and it's mm. meant to make make things. You know, cover up cranes and whatnot. So. Oh well, th it's uh, it's all about supporting the story and just. Great you work, are going to make wire removal sexy, Bill. Don't worry. <laughs> well, you do. Yeah. You're a sexy man. Yeah. Copyright you that. make wire removal sexy. <laughs> and great, great acting, great writing, Jenny. Thank you. Great directing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, man. So thank you, everybody. Thanks thank for listening. You. Thank you. Thank you.